Hello, and welcome to the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Kelly Mae Ross, and joining me today is Janice Berger, co-president of the Rockbridge Lexington Education Association. Hi, Janice. Thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting me. So first, I was wondering if you could tell us uh, what exactly the Rockbridge Lexington Education Association is. It is the local association that's affiliated with the Virginia Education Association, which is the state chapter of the National Education Association. And it's a group of teachers who join together to um, discuss and to advocate for issues that affect education, um, both the teachers and the children in the classroom. And I understand that the uh, Rapids Lexington chapter had a meeting last night. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell me a little bit about some of the things that you talked about at the meeting? Uh, we talked about some upcoming events. Read Across America is on uh, Friday, this coming Friday, March 2nd. Um, but we also discussed, a big portion of our meeting was discussing the legislation in the General, in the general Assembly right now and the concerns that teachers have about some of, some of the legislation that's going through. I know that um, a bill that's been getting a lot of attention lately mm -hmm. is the Teacher Contracts Bill, HB 576, mm -hmm. um, that would um, change the way teachers are evaluated mm -hmm. and, and uh, do away with continuing contracts. I yeah. was wondering if you could um, talk a little bit about that and um, what your concern is as mm -hmm. a teacher. Um, but since you are currently a teacher, mm -hmm. you will get to hold on to your continuing mm -hmm. contract and that job security. But um, mm -hmm. why does this bill still concern you? Um, it concerns me because as a, as a member of the RLEA and the VEA, I, I'm not just simply concerned about my job and my position. I'm a professional and I'm concerned about our profession as a whole and what it does, um, what this bill, kind of bill does for our teachers and ultimately for the students in our classroom. Yes, I, my continuing contract status would be, um, would not be threatened under this, this new bill, but um, new teachers coming in would not have that continuing contract. And it kind of concerns me when I think about who would sort of want to go into education these days. Um, we all know going into education that the salary is not going to be uh, Donald, Donald Trump's salary, but we love children and so we make that choice anyway. Um, but it is concerning to, to say that, you know, the salaries are, are a, a bit troubling, but also there is no sort of job security. Uh, I think I received a, an email from the VEA, either Kitty um, Boytnot or Rob Lee Jones, that said that this bill is a solution looking for a problem. There is no problem in place. There, is, there are procedures in place currently to remove teachers who are underperforming from the classroom. There is no reason for this bill. It's unneeded legislation, and it's just sort of a, a slap in the face to the profession as a whole, I believe. Has the Rockbridge Lexington Education Association or the Virginia Education Association, have, have they done anything to, to voice their opinion on the bill? Oh, absolutely. Um, we receive emails constantly asking us to email um, our senators, our representatives in Richmond. Um, we emails, phone calls. We had a Black Friday last Friday across the state. Teachers wore black in the classroom. Um, Again, just getting the word out there to our members, and not just our members, but all teachers across the state, to please contact their people in Richmond and, and let them know how dissatisfied they are. And I think a result of that is that the HB 576 has been passed by now for, I think, two or three days, and um, because I think the vote is just not there to get this passed. So I think it, that is in part due to the pressure that teachers have put upon people in Richmond. The bill has been been passed by for a vote in the Senate, yes, correct? Yes, yes. Why do you think they've been passing it by? Why do you think there hasn't been a vote at this point? I think that the governor realizes that he doesn't have the numbers that he needs to get the vote passed, and so he's hoping that if he postpones the vote, he can contact his people in Richmond, um, the Republicans who maybe aren't voting the way he wants them to, and encourage them to uh, change their vote, swing their vote. Are there any other bills in particular that the General Assembly is considering that um, concern you as, as a teacher, as co-president? There, there's a bill right now, um, there are several bills actually, um, that are those bills are attacking VRS, which doesn't just affect teachers, it affects anybody who's a state employee, um, the Virginia retirement system. Um, th that is particularly concerning. Uh, I also know that there's a bill, uh, House Bill 1063, 
which deals with letting localities set their own calendars. And that is coming up, I believe, in the Senate tomorrow for a vote. Uh, March 1st is tomorrow. So yes, it's coming up tomorrow for a vote um, in the subcommittee in the Senate. So that's one that we are strongly in favor of seeing passed, that we believe localities should be able to set their own calendar and, and start the school year when they see fit. Well, what would be the benefit of, um, of the, the calendar bill and of possibly having um, an earlier start to the school mm -hmm. year? Um, especially with SOL testing, you want to get as much instruction in as humanly possible before you, you have to have your students take the SOL. So the earlier you can get started your, in your school year, the earlier you can get instruction started, the more instruction the children receive. Um, I also know in some localities you're looking at quite a few snow days. And right now you can currently apply for a waiver, but again, it's a process that you, that you have to go through. I think localities know what their weather patterns are like from year to year and can make a, a good choice about starting early so that the snow days don't impact their calendar quite as badly. Have you spoken um, with anyone uh, um, possibly in the assembly, I know that you've been to mm -hmm. Richmond on a few occasions to mm -hmm. sit in on committee meetings. Mm -hmm. Have you spoken to them about um, the, the calendar bill? Mm -hmm. Do you know, um, do you have mm -hmm. a feel of how that vote might go tomorrow? Um, I spoke with uh, Senator Creed Deeds several years ago about it, myself and, and some other um, RLEA members, and he was favorable for passing it, but pointed out that the, um, the entertainment lobby uh, is very strong in Richmond and they oppose this. They would prefer that the cal our school calendars don't start until after Labor Day to extend the tourism year. So um, although he was in favor of supporting us on this, uh, it's, it's a very tough bill to get passed for that reason. And then to return to the Virginia Retirement System mm -hmm. bill that you mentioned, um, what exactly is your biggest concern with the changes that could be made to the to the system under this bill? Um, the way that the system is set up now, you are guaranteed your benefits when you retire. Um, they're looking to switch it over to, um, you, you pay into a retirement system and what you pay into it is sort of what you get out of it when you retire. I have to say as a teacher, you know, I love my job, I love teaching, I love the children, but I, I, I don't think that there are many teachers who would say that we're overpaid. So it's very difficult um, with the cost of living and the, the um, economy being what it is, it's very difficult to put money aside in savings. And speaking personally, I'm counting on my retirement uh, when it comes time for me to retire from teaching. I'm counting on that to live. And it would be very difficult for me to have to pay in each pay period and save up enough money to be able to live off of when I retire. And uh, do you know when that might be? How long have you been teaching and <laughs> when do you think? Uh... I've been teaching 20 years and, and I'm still loving it and I'm still learning as a teacher every day and you know I would be happy to stay in it you know another 20 more years. Yeah. Does the um, Rockbridge Lexington Education Association do um, does it have any plans for for future action um, or communication with mm -hmm. the General Assembly with relation to these bills and, mm -hmm. and possibly others? Oh, absolutely. Again, we're, we're getting out emails every day. We try to, um, the VEA is very good about sending out emails to all of its members, but we try to get the, forward those emails specifically to our school buildings, um, to our teachers in our school buildings, and encourage them to contact their people in Richmond. I know that there's a rally in Roanoke this weekend. Um, uh, just talking about it's a wake-up call for the things that are going on in education and, and on these bills now, so definitely. Do you think anyone from the uh, local association will be attending the rally in Richmond? I hope so. I, I, um, the, in Roanoke, um, I talked to several teachers at the meeting yesterday, and, and there, there are hopes that we'll have several people there this weekend. And uh, just another thing that um, the General Assembly is, is considering is the budget. Mm. And I know that there was um, mm. voting and discussion of that this weekend. Um, the uh, Governor McDonald's original budget proposal, it's been amended a great deal and it mm. seems that schools have received, public mm. education is receiving more money mm -hmm. under this new budget. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel about the budget as it stands? Um, <laughs> more money is always better. <laughs> um, you can do more with more money. Um, the problem with, with 
increasing it, and, and I don't know how much it's been increased, is that is the trickle down. By the time this money sort of trickles down to the actual classroom, sometimes it has dissipated so much you don't see the impact as much as you would like to. Um, I, I'm hoping that you know there's an understanding that this money is to go directly to the classroom for supplies. I know in my own school right now we're struggling with um, with the budget and, and not having the money that we need necessarily. Um, I know the expectations are increasing on us with No Child Left Behind and AYP, um, the new teacher evaluation process. So the expectations are increasing and the funding is decreasing and that makes it incredibly difficult some days to, to do the job that you want to do. And you work at Waddell, you mm -hmm. teach first grade. What, um, what do you think will will be the hardest hit at your school if uh, there, there is a budget shortfall? Um, I believe the discussion right now is that field trips are going to have to take a hit and I think that that's unfortunate, especially for those children who don't have um, the experiences coming into school. They need those experiences. That, the field trips aren't just like fun days off for teachers. It's, it's to give children those opportunities to experience things that maybe they wouldn't otherwise get a chance to. So I think that that's going to be a really difficult thing for those children who wouldn't have those opportunities otherwise. And well, thank you so much. I, uh, I'm afraid we're out of time, but um, thank you again for coming in and, and talking with us. And thank you for tuning in to the on record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Kelly Mae Ross.